Hello and welcome to the classroom. Thank you for being here, Super Sentence Stackers. My name is Mrs Considine and I'm your writing teacher. I'm here to guide you, help you, and together we'll collect words and build them into sentences and we'll be able to create vivid, spine-tingling moments together. All of us around the UK and beyond, together we are the Super Sentence Stackers. So, thank you for being here and in the classroom and ready to write. And I'm going to support you in your writing. But what do I need you to do? Well, I need you to make sure you have a piece of paper, a pencil or a pen, because I need you to be thinking. I need you to be gathering and collecting words and we're going to work in unison together. The more you collect, the more you jot, then down the line, the better your writing will be. So, before we get going with today's lesson, I do just want to do a celebration of the work yesterday. Well, there were so many of you in attendance. I think we had more writers more stackers than any time before. But who stood out? Here, Diabat, age 10, they've got notes, they've got jottings. I'm just going to show you some of the things they've gathered here on the side. Um, they've written down would, should, could. They've got little moments there where they worked in unison with me at the point of collecting and jotting. I'm now going to read a little moment from Dyer's work. It's so good. In frustration, Alma shapes a snowball as icy as a temper and hurls it at the shop door. Thinking the shop is closed, Alma begins to walk away, then strangely the door opens. Should she really be entering this peculiar place? Would she get in trouble? Could this be a trick? Oh, I love that group of three questions there, in, drawing the reader in. Thank you so much for that piece of work. And remember, if you hand your writing in in time by 12.30, then you might feature on the celebration wall. What we've learned there from that piece of work is actually good word collectors make great writers. And I'm going to now let you know what today's focus is. Today's focus film is called Bow and it's all about a mum who has a second chance of motherhood. Her son, her real son, has left home and then something really strange happens. You might say a little bit magical, a little bit unusual. And she becomes a mum again for a very unusual object. Okay, before we get going, I'm going to outline some rules that we all need to work towards so that we can build stories within our class, build stories with our friends. I can build a story across the country because when you write, I don't need you to write for the whole film. I just need you to write for a little time chunk. If you look in the description below, you'll always find a link to the film and you can also find the choose the chunk sheet. This is the film broken up into little time segments and your work is going to write within those plot points. I'm going to let you know now which plot point I'm going to choose and I'm going to choose plot point seven, chunk seven, darkness. This is a sad part of the film and that's the moment I've chosen. 
I'm going to let you know the sort of thing I need on your piece of paper. I always need your name. Here's my name, Mrs Considine. I always need your age so I can look closely at how well you're doing. And I need the chunk. I'm going to do chunk seven. So I've made a note of that. Okay. What we're going to do now is double check that you are together with me and how you become in unison with me is you must now get a piece of paper. I've got mine. You must get a pencil or a pen. Check. Because now we are going to really think, jot and collect words. We're going to gather um, signposts, jottings, initial thoughts, ideas, really importantly, words and phrases. And there might be times in our writing, and there will be in yours too, that you need to do some thesaurus thinking, where you group words in the same synonym family, but you choose the very best for the job. Now, you are under my stewardship and a blank piece of paper is our working territory. And as I take you through my thinking, my job as your teacher is to make my thinking visible. I'm going to let you see inside the writer's brain. You're going to see me struggle with words, tossle and tussle, and I might chuck some in the bin. They might get rejected because they're not quite vivid or accurate enough or are nearly there but not quite good enough because we are going to choose precisely so that our writing is extremely sharp. Okay, so Every time we meet in the classroom, you know the expectations. I would like you to write nine sentences for your chunk. And I always challenge you to do three things. So what are the challenges today? Mrs C always takes them from the writing rainbow and many of you have got the writing rainbow in your classroom. Some of you have got your writing rainbows at home. What are today's challenges? This is where I'd like you to make a jotting of these with me so that we have some together thinking. Okay, our first writing challenge is going to be about adverbs. And what we're going to have a go at doing here is dropping in an adverb, and I know you're getting good at this, ending in L-Y. These are the how adverbs, and we're getting used to, aren't we? Green arrow, which means these adverbs can move about in a clause. They often have three different positions. Oh, and I love moving adverbs about to get them in the best place. The second writing challenge is we're going to focus on feelings. And this is a fabulous film for that moving shift between emotions. Depending on the chunk you've chosen, you might need to drench your chunk in positive feelings or negative feelings. But as I read your work, and I'll be looking out for one to celebrate, it's the feeling language that I'll be really interested in. The third aspect is going to be about verbs, but in particular, I'm looking for a, a precise verb that really captures uh, the action. Oh, shall I tell you a really fun fact about the English language? Do you know what the most overused verb in the whole language is? We can't stop using it. And it's great to use it in talk, 
but it's not very precise, is the word got. You know, I got a bit stressed this morning, uh, I got lost on the way to work, um, I, I got here eventually. Yeah, we use it all the time in talk and it's fun for chitter chatter, but for writing there's always a better, more accurate, more precise verb. Oh, Mrs C is full of fun facts about the English language. Right, you are now my community jotters, word collectors. Good word collectors make great writers. Best-selling authors have journals and jotters and they can't help themselves getting stuck to words and writing them down and that's exactly what I want you to do. Even if you don't need them for your chunk, they might help you with other ideas. So, first of all, on my piece of paper, I'm going to think about chunk seven and I'm going to make some jottings about some big ideas. Um, so we have a mum. Uh, the mum is the central character. So we're going to write a third person narrative. So these are some of the things uh, you will need to use as the writer of the story. We need to agree that. We're going to use the terms mum and son and bow. These are the names we're going to use. Okay. He and she are going to be important pronouns. So, first of all, I think it's really important to know in this film and um, when you're a parent and your children leave home, sometimes parents really miss them. And this is known as empty nest syndrome. And actually, I think mum is missing her real son. He's left home. So I'm going to make a note of that term, empty nest syndrome. I might not use it in the story, but it helps me understand what is happening in her life. I'm also going to write down second chance, because in this film she gets a second chance um, to love uh, someone else. And she misses her son really badly. I'm going to write down the word badly. Uh, it's a bit chatty though. It is an adverb, but it might not be the one I use. Okay, I'm going to start with the central character, Mum. Mum, and this is the sad bit. She's actually really upset, um, and she's she she's crying so deeply. She's thrown herself on the floor. Mum misses her son. Oh. I need to tell the reader this is her real son that she misses. Misses her real son. And here I'm using the word so to intensify it so badly, like for emphasis, for intensity. I already know that badly is a bit chatty. So I'm going to go to my thesaurus thinking wall. Um, Badly gets me going. I know I don't want to use that, but I need words in this same family. Badly, fiercely. Oh, I like that. Fiercely. Let me write that down. Fiercely. Oh, I'm never sure. Does it need an L-E-Y? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, deeply. Deeply. Misses him so deeply. So desperately. Oh, I like those. Uh, I think I like fiercely. Um, Mum misses her real son so fiercely she is scared. I could put a full stop there or I could add more information. She is scared. She is going to lose Bow too, because Bow is her little. Oh, he's 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 her little doe boy son. Oh, she says she's going to lose 
bow two, full stop. I think that's the right two. Mm. Common phones can be tricky and you need to check them out, but that is the right two. I'm now going to move on because I don't want to rush how she's feeling. So on this next part, I'm going to write some notes. Uh, I've already used the word scared. Um, I'm going to use the word lonely and upset and worried, but I don't even know if they are strong enough. Um, it's much more than that, actually. I'm, I'm going to introduce the idea of fear. The determiner, the, the fear of, and then maybe I need to, lonely might be better as something like loneliness. I'm going to go to my thesaurus thinking board and double check. Loneliness is definitely the word I want to use. Let's rub those out. Okay. Loneliness, mm, sadness. I wonder if they could all be nusses. I don't know. Hollowness, a fear of hollowness, a uh, fear of isolation. Mm, that's not a nuss, but it would work. A fear of heartache. Mm, they're all good, aren't they? Um, hollowness and loneliness are the most accurate. Uh, I'm going to go with loneliness. The fear of loneliness and emptiness, because it feels like hollowness, I like it, grips her. I want you to notice... Um, I want you to notice what I do next. The fear of loneliness and emptiness grips her. Um, oh, do you know what? As I'm thinking, I'm going to go, go back and reread that. I think I've missed some words. Look here, look. Mum, it's a good job I did a bit of rereading there. Mum misses her real son so fiercely, she's scared. She is going bow to. So I've missed some words. That is really common. That is why missed out words is one of the most common things writers do live in the moment. I'm going to put an arrow here. She is scared she's going to lose bow to. That's better. The fear of loneliness and emptiness grips her. Watch this. I'm going to put in dots because we feel like this is going to, this is happening again and grips her. And the ellipsis there is signifying that we know that she's done this before. Grips her. Right, I'm now going to move to this part of the film, which is a little bit hard to understand, I think. I think she's, she so wants her sons near her, she just doesn't know what to do. And actually, she puts the steam bun son inside. It's, it's strange, but I think it's because she's in so much pain. It's almost like she's so scared she's going to lose her steam bun son, like she lost her real son. She doesn't know what to do, but she does that to keep him close. So I need to think about that. I need to think about how hurt she is. I'm going to write down hurt. I'm going to write down angry. I'm going to write down darkness. There's some initial ideas. And I, w I need to tell the reader about this act of desperation. In fact, I like that phrase. I'm going to start with that. Okay. In an act of desperation. 
in an act of desperation. Ah, oh, I think what I need to do here is, after the ellipsis, um, imagine that that ellipsis is covering the word once, then finish with again. So the fear of loneliness and emptiness grips her ellipsis again in an act of desperation, comma, she eats, mm. eats maybe swallows, she swallows her steam bun sun whole because it's so sudden and I, and I think it means she doesn't want to lose him. Then I want to come back to magnifying negative feelings. So I'm going to go to my thinking board here and I'm going to collect words that mean hurt. So let me write down hurt. Hurt, pain, uh, sorrow, heartache. Now, I also know I'm challenging myself to build a precise verb. So I'm going to write verb here and then I'm going to see if I can start with the feeling and then almost have this gripping sense, this movement of these feelings. And this is where the precise verb can come in. It's almost we're going to add movement. So we could have um, hurt. Mm. Now, I probably need to move that onto the this side, use it as a verb over here, hurt, and then bring back that word I had earlier. Heartache hurts her, pain punches her, sorrow snipes her, it's not too bad, sorrow sinks her, Oh, look, I've already got heartache there. If I change that for another word uh, in the family, maybe, uh, let me think. Mm. No, I'm gonna reject that idea, I'm getting stuck. But I've got three good ideas there. Sorrow sinks her, pain punches her, heartache hurts her. And then I start with that. Um, hurt. Hijacks, that's a good precise verb. Hurt hijacks the mother, short to the point. That's really effective. And now I want to end with her crying. I might use some repetition to really emphasize it. Her tears, her real tears are for her son, not her steam bun son. I'm going to put a comma there, her real son. I'm going to go back and reread that. She's, that's who she's missing, really. And by having the steam bun as her imaginary son for a while, it makes her feel better. But in the long run, she has to deal with how much she misses her real son. Mum misses her real son so fiercely, she's scared she's going to lose Bo too. The fear of loneliness and emptiness grips her again. In an act of desperation, she swallows her steam. Oh, Mrs. C, that M is a little bit confusing there. Her steam burn hole. Hurt hijacks the mother. Her tears, her real tears are for her son. Her real son. I'm really pleased with that. That was a tricky part to write. It was drenched in negative emotions, but I think we've done a good job there. And 
I hope it has been a rich treasure chest of words for you that you might need or actually ideas where you can go the complete opposite way when she's really happy and joyous. Um, what do I want you to do now? Well, I want you, my precious pen pushers, my wonderful word weavers, I want you to go and watch the film. Enjoy the film, take your time. Choose your favourite part. Choose your chunk and write your nine sentences with the most evocative, vivid words and hand your work back into me by 12.30. I love reading your work. I read all the work. I try and comment on as many pieces as I can. And remember, I'm on the lookout for one to share on the celebration board. Hand your work in with the hashtag Super Sentence Stackers. Post it on Twitter, Facebook. Give it to your teacher. They can get it to me. And some of you have found me on Instagram. I really do love seeing the improvements. And many of your, your work that I see regularly, the good attenders here, your work is wonderful. Thank you everybody and I will see your work at 12.30 but I will see you back in the Super Sentence Stackers classroom at quarter to ten. Thank you everybody. Goodbye. Thank you.